Yeah, it's a strange one. Anyway. All right, we're live. We got audio, and I think we're good to go. <clears throat> All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Lightning Thunderbolt here. Welcome back to more Sonic the Hedgehog Project 06 by Chaos X. And you already know we love playing this game. Um, uh, welcome to our uh, countdown to Sage Week. Uh, this is the uh, the last episode before we start streaming some new Sage content. Really looking forward to streaming the Silver Update soon. But uh, today what we're going to be doing is a little something different. I know a lot of y'all have been really enjoying the Project 06 content. So what we're basically doing today is we're doing a video on... Um, there have been a lot of requests for beginner strats on uh, on Project 06. There have been a lot of people on the channel requesting, like, can you give us any tips? Uh, how would you get started? How would you get the most out of the game? What settings do you use? What's your PC like? Uh, so I figured that's what we would do today. And I bet you're wondering why this video is a little bit late. Well, we already attempted a stream like this before, but um, I feel like I kind of rambled a bit too much and I didn't really summarize things well. Going to be hoping to do that a bit better for you guys today, streamline things, uh, but it's not like we're not going to use that older footage. Uh, some funny moments uh, and plenty of uh, cool stuff actually happened during that stream. So I've got my good buddy Karubo2568 working on uh, that video right now helping with editing. We'll put a link to his channel in the description as well. He's a cool guy. You should go check him out as well. But anyway, um, to see before we get into the game. Uh, so just uh, just a full disclosure, um, a lot of you have been asking about my PC specs and what I use to run it because I've been saying like you need a generally a pretty beefy PC to run Project 06, although I know that there are some friends I have who have actually been able to run it on Windows 7 of all things, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I do have a computer that's designed for gaming. Uh, obviously, I run a Windows 10 OS. Uh, I have an i7-9700 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 1660 Ti for the uh, graphics card and everything. But uh, yeah, that, so it's it's not like the best gaming PC, but it's it's quite decent, and it's it, it served me quite well. I've had it for a couple of years, and uh, it works quite well. But anyway, but yeah, so you come here, you click Reset Data. It says Reset Save Data. All the save progress and statistics will be erased. If you want to save all your old stuff, uh, copy it over to a separate folder wherever you keep your games, and then you, we're going to erase the data on uh, this new save. So now, yep, it restarts and everything, so then that's going to be a new save setting. Now, audio, there's not much that we do here. Um, game settings and video settings are what we're interested in. So, uh, there's not much that I... It kind of defaults to uh, your ideal resolution and everything. Um, I didn't really mess with any of this. What you want to do is go into video settings and go to advanced. Now, here are the settings that I use. If you're wondering why your game is lagging, uh, here's pretty much what you want to do. Volume, metric lights, and SSAO, turn those to medium. The shadows are the big things. Reflections, I would turn them off if you have, like, not a great PC. I can have them on but low. Shadows, you don't really need much. It doesn't take much from the, away from the experience. Uh, distance low, and then cascades. It can go up to four cascades or back to off. I have it on two cascades. And you can also turn down the draw distance and texture quality. I have them both on high because my PC can handle it pretty well, uh, so no issue there. Everything else can pretty pretty much be on. Uh, I turn the blur effects off because it tends to slow things down. It doesn't add a lot to the experience. The bloom is fine. Um, it, the camera lens effects, just to let you know, is basically fire, mist, heat effects, like the, the, the Kingdom Valley rain. That is, like, really, really good. Um, Yo, mind your graphics are on max. We'd love to see it. Uh, but yeah, the lens effects, uh, I have them on because I like them and my PC can handle it. You can turn them off if your PC is still struggling with that, but I hope that helps you guys with the, um, the optimization settings and everything, um, for your PC. Shout out to another Tommy-san or Tomi-san, uh, on YouTube, who actually sh first showed me, uh, the way to optimize this for the Shadow release, and hopefully Chaos is going to be optimizing it, uh, further in the Silver release. Uh, and then with game settings... Uh, the only thing that I have shifted here, I think, everything else is pretty much uh, on uh, Invert Camera Y, Glider Y, um, in-game dialogue and cutscenes. Glider Y, I think, is like airplane controls. Um, although maybe it's not. It's actually been a while since I've played with the glider. Um, but the glider feels good inverted to me. That's just me. You can mess around with that if you want. Um, you can notice the voiceover languages, which is great. Uh, I to have authenticity. I, um, I adjust it to uh, PlayStation buttons since I'm using PS4 controller. Um, and then, oh, you can also adjust the background video. That's like for your intro screen and everything. I just keep it on Kingdom Valley for nostalgia purposes. The only thing I really have shifted besides PlayStation buttons is the camera X 
because the left and right felt weird when it was inverted, so um, I turned that off. Um, but yeah, turns the model into the one from uh, SA2. Quality of life improvement? Interesting. <laughs> shadow Jam. If you turn down the shadow quality, it makes shadows slower. <laughs> yeah, well, imagine if it actually did that. <laughs> quote, shadow quality. No, we have, like, shadow quality, and then in quotes, shadow quality, as in the character. <laughs> so much debris. <laughs> but anyway, those are pretty much the settings. So, before we go ahead and get started, since our settings were more or less the same, we're going to go ahead and hop into the game room. Um, uh, now, for optimized settings, I would say this is what you do for game room ahead of time. Um, Spin effect, you can have it on, like, Adventure, I say, too, with a default. I like Adventure because it just looks cool. Jump Dash type is either the straight Jump Dash uh, from the original retail, the curved Jump Dash, I think that's more from the uh, the demo builds, and Legacy, which is basically Sonic Heroes and uh, Adventure Jump Dash. It carries the momentum, and I really like that. Um, the Gem Shoes, uh, the custom ones are, it's just Sonic Shoes, but with, like, a little glow in the back. I like the original Gem Shoes. Um, you want to have upgrade models on, that's probably fine. The, uh, this is the demo music, basically. Uh, this is just, uh, the, uh, heads-up display kind of customization. Uh, credit sends you to the credit screen. Uh, TGS Sonic is just different running animations. Uh, and camera type, you have retail, E3, or TGS. Most speedrunners, and most people will agree, to go with E3, it's a bit slower, initially more zoomed in, but it's a bit, um, so it's, a, it's a bit of a slower camera. It's better, because, um... It will give you like a zoomed out, uh, wider FOV field of view on um, on the um, on the mock speed sections, which is an absolute godsend. Uh, homing and attack reticles—that's like a quality of life change, so that definitely helps. But yeah, these these are pretty much uh, the settings that I use. Uh, but anyway, first thing we're gonna do, since this is basically a video on optimizing your experience with Project 06, we're gonna hop into the test stage and just give you the basics. So I'm going to be explaining this basically as if no, I'm talking to someone who has never played uh, Project 06 at all, um, or even the original Sonic 06. So as you can see, um, I am in fact um, doing D-pad inputs. We our file is reset, um, and uh, Sonic does not have any of his gems. We're going to get into the gems later. So. Getting right into it, you can uh, maneuver with the bumpers for your camera. Uh, you can move with the uh, right stick for camera as well. Left stick, of course, is your movement. Um, now, uh, to get into Sonic's basic moves. So, you have your spin jump. That's just your your jump action, your X button. You can tap it. Holding it lets you get a flow to your jump and lets you get higher. Oh, uh, left trigger is reset camera if you're ever disoriented and you need to, like, you know, see where you're, where you're facing. Just tap left trigger and you're good to go. Um... So anyway, yeah, jump is like, you know, you can do like a tap jump, a floaty jump, and unlike in, um, I would say unlike in recent Sonic games, and I hope they fix this for Frontiers, um, if you tap jump or, or hold jump, you can actually bounce on enemies, which is a staple of the platformer, so you can just jump into the sky, boom, easy. And that's how you can damage them. Spin jump is kind of like your main way of attacking enemies. If you're like running towards an enemy and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot to attack, you can simply tap jump and it will let, and it will damage him some more. Um, so you can kind of do like a split second thing. There are a lot of like reaction based things with this as well. Um, obviously, then you're gonna have your jump action slash attack first, uh, your jump attack action, which is going to be your jump dash. That's gonna be jump again while in the air. This lets you get some speed. And this is also your main way of attacking enemies. You jump, press it again. When you're locked on, you can attack the enemy. Um, be careful when Sonic is running or not in a spin form, because then he can take damage, and you don't want to do that. Now, obviously, with one-hit enemies, the homing attack is going to be the best way to take them out. However, enemies that have multiple hits, you're going to want to do a, an attack that does multiple damage. In enters your primary attack function. Let's talk about the ground function of that first. So, your square button, now you don't have to stand still for this, is your spin dash. You can charge it up, and then release it and then you can tap to uncurl. You can also, just like in Sonic Adventure, you can like tap it quickly for a quick burst of speed when you're running and it carries your momentum. You can also spam it a lot to do what people lovingly call the spam dash to maintain your speed. This is gonna be your main way of keeping momentum when we don't have the blue gem. Now, moving on from that, um, in the air, your square button does something as well. I'm just gonna stick to PS4 controls. Uh, I'm not gonna translate to Xbox or uh, keyboard controls, 
but you know there are plenty of ways that you can optimize that depending on what you use and there's uh, lots of things you can look up for that but just for sake of uh, simplicity I'm gonna keep it as uh, as PS4 controls uh, so anyway if you jump and then press square, you can perform the bounce attack with Sonic. Bouncing multiple times sends you higher, and this is also a hitbox. Normally, you had to perform the homing attack in order to uh, attack with a bounce, but you can pretty much continually bounce, and you can actually hit enemies with this. And it's a multi-hit, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, the homing attack can lock onto rails and items as well, so that's very useful. Now, we've gone over homing attack, and we've gone over bounce. This is pretty much going to be Sonic's bread and butter when taking out enemies. When you're, um, when you're, you can spin dash like small enemies to take them out. That counts as a hitbox. You can also perform the homing attack to take them out. That's good for one hit enemies. But if you're dealing with enemies that have multiple health, you're going to want to just tear down, uh, enemies using a multi-attack. So the, the bread and butter is basically the homing bounce combo. Same from the original 06, but much, much better. So you run up, homing attack, bounce attack, and then you just keep bouncing, and then you can take out an enemy, just tear through their health, no problem. Feels incredibly satisfying. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what that does. Um, you can also perform... We're not going to go over speed run strats, since a lot of those are going to be, uh, like the spin leap, for example, gets a higher jump, but that's going to be taken out in the silver update. So we're just going to go with basic strats. You can also perform something to get distance called a spin dash jump. This was classic from... Uh, like from the classic Sonic games, and it was it, it was carried over to like Adventure as well, and I'm really glad it carries over here. So obviously you spin dash to maintain your speed. You can kind of just whoops little uh, divot there. You can spam dash and then jump and kind of maintain your speed. Um, but say you're like on a ledge and uh, say the ground below me here is uh, more or less death. Um, if you essentially want to uh, you know uh, gain enough speed to get to like that platform over there. Obviously, a jump and a jump dash is not going to get you there. Maybe a running start might get you there, but probably not. But anyway, what uh, what spin dash jump, this is a classic Sonic strategy. What this is practical for is basically getting to platforms more easily. So you hold spin dash and you jump out of it. And we were able to attack that enemy and get on the, on the platform. So obviously, it gets you more distance. That is a godsend uh, in uh, clutch situations. Uh, so yeah, Sonic also has, if you want a quicker method of attack, then you also have Sonic Spin Kick, which is the circle button. You can quickly attack enemies, however, be careful because you are vulnerable after this, right about there. You can also jump out of it, but you're also vulnerable after this. You're not going to see me using circle too often. Um, uh, a note about homing attack, by the way, about jump dash. You can bounce out of, um, you can sort of bounce out of homing attack. Uh, but you can't homing attack twice until you hit the ground. Uh, so that's important to remember. Uh, yes, Modern, that, that is good. Yeah, the, um, that he's uh, translating the Xbox controls for y'all. But yeah, if you have an Xbox controller, it's essentially the same setup with the button plate. Just translate to Xbox controller. I don't know keyboard controls, but I'm sure there are plenty in the community who can help you out. Uh, and I'm sure there are uh, some controls for it in uh, the manual or the uh, update log that Chaos provides with the download, which of course will be in the description. But anyway, if you hold down circle, you can slide. And this is another way to take out enemies as well. Um, this gives you a, a, a few more forgiving frames, you, and it, that, that is a multi-hit as well. You can also jump out of this one, but again, jumping out of spin, click, kick, and slide makes you a bit more vulnerable, so you have to be careful when doing that, of course. Um, and then of course we haven't talked about triangle yet. Your triangle is your light speed dash, and that's going to be basically when you're near a trail of rings, all you need to do is jump towards the trail of rings. This used to be on your bounce attack, by the way, uh, but thankfully it's mapped to a separate button, so when you're near a trail of rings, all you gotta do is mash triangle, and then you'll immediately snap to the spline and perform the light speed dash. It's a way of getting to, like, other areas. Bear in mind, in mock speed sections, uh, if you look at my inputs, what you're doing is Sonic will be moving automatically. In mock speed sections, you're going to be basically steering back and forth. However, if you want to increase speed, you'll hold down the analog stick forward. And if you want to jump to maximum possible speed, what you will do is essentially mash the triangle button near a trail of rings and keep your analog stick held forward. This will put Sonic into his maximum run state, which is a bit less controllable. However, you can also smash through enemies and breakable objects this way. And that is very, very helpful because that gives you a lot more forgiveness uh, when running through mock speed sections. And you're going to need to be able to get good at this when you are in the, um, the Crisis City mock speed section because that one's a bit tricky. 
We'll talk about scoring later and why uh, it gets a bit more tricky. Um, but yeah, I think that's all of Sonic's basic moves. I talked about camera, I talked about reset camera. Your right trigger is your ultimate te technique or your special technique. Now, Sonic can use that with the gems. However, um, uh, the, Sonic doesn't have a lot of moves that he can use without the gems. And we're going to show you which gems are great for a casual run. We'll talk about what each of them do. And we'll talk about the 100% unlockable rewards. I guess we'll talk about items real quick. Um, uh, this Obviously, the rings can be found in capsules. Uh, you can also find um, shields in capsules. These can take one hit for you and will prevent you from losing rings. If you get hit, you lose rings, but you can pick them back up if you've never played a Sonic game before for some reason. And if you ever get hit with zero rings, you lose a life. Uh, that's Sonic's face in the top left corner there. That's the life icon right there. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to talk about uh, speed shoes. Oh, thank you, Modern, for reminding me of that. Um, so spin dash is actually quite important um, because in addition to being able to take out enemies, if you spin dash downhill, you can actually, as you saw there, you can gain a bit of momentum. If you just ta casually tap the spin dash button downhill, on flat surfaces, you will eventually lose momentum and drop spin dash automatically, uh, like that. However, um, if you do this downhill, you'll gain momentum, and this is incredibly helpful for, helpful in areas like Kingdom Valley, uh, when you're on like some of those uh, horizontal slopes, and of course, on um, in Aquatic Base. There's, there's an area where that's very, very helpful if you don't yet have the blue gem, which you won't have for the first uh, bits of the level. The gems, by the way, are kind of like upgrades for Sonic, they are hidden throughout the levels, much like uh, the light speed shoes and the bounce bracelet in uh, previous adventure titles. Yes, green shield was not in the game, but in the manual. But uh, chaos is implemented a lot here. Um, the, uh, the speed shoes also were not implemented, but yeah, power sneakers. When you get these, they obviously increase your speed. Pretty self-explanatory. You can run faster simply by doing nothing, and then spam dash gets you even faster than that. Uh, so that will increase your speed. Uh, it will not do anything for smashing into enemies because. This is not a boost game. We don't need boost here. It ain't no modern game. Invincibility obviously makes you immune to all damage except for death drops. Uh, you can run towards enemies and simply tap them, and they will instantaneously die and or take damage. So that's always fun. Um, and I like the adventure effect on that. He did upgrade a few effects for that. Uh, these blue boxes here with these, um, these energy crystal looking things, these are chaos drives. And they will basically upgrade the action gauge or, and or replenish it, which I will show you. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for all of Sonic's movesets. Now, Sonic actually has four, um, characters, essentially. Four models separated into separate characters. There's your base Sonic, there is Sonic on the snowboard, uh, which has different controls. Uh, you pretty much just hold jump in order to charge, and then you release it at the jump ramp to jump. Uh, you can tap square for a burst of speed, and that's pretty much how you control it. You just steer, and he does tricks automatically. Um... And then there's uh, Mach Speed Sonic, which of course he's running full speed automatically, but you can get uh, even faster by holding the analog stick forward and light speed dashing. Um, and then aside from the 100% uh, unlock reward for S-ranking all of Sonic stages, there's Sonic carrying the Princess Elise. Uh, now, obviously, Sonic, uh, when, when carrying her, he's a bit more vulnerable, but he gains a move, which of course is what I like to call the Jesus Shield, the uh, Jesus Shield, because it lets you walk on water. Actually, does it work on this water? Oh no, so this, this water isn't coded to do that, never mind. Um, but yeah, it lets you walk on water and quicksand, and it also um, has the ability to damage enemies, which didn't work really well in retail, but works much, much better in Sonic 06, in, in Sonic uh, Product 06. Now, Sonic has the jump dash when he's carrying Elise. Um, he doesn't have the spin dash, as you can see. Uh, he does have the light speed dash, because you need that to get across some areas. But if you just tap cir uh, circle, then he goes into his sliding animation, and that will damage enemies. Sonic is vulnerable when he jumps, however. Not during a homing attack, but he's vulnerable when he jumps. If you're not in spin form, pretty much just, yeah, Jesus shield. Funny. What's up, Tom? Welcome to the stream. But yeah, uh, Sonic is vulnerable in this state. He cannot hit enemies. The homing attack will allow him to hit enemies. The slide allows him to hit enemies. Another thing about the slide, which is very useful, that was not in the original game, uh, gain, game. Ha, I can talk tonight. The original game. Just like uh, with Spin Dash, if you tap Slide, you can gain momentum downhill. So this is basically Sonic's roll with Elise. And uh, let me just demo the shield for you here. If you hold the shield when running into an enemy, well, that happens, I guess, with big enemies. But anyway, um, I guess it doesn't always work with the bigger enemies. It's With the bigger enemies, what you want to do is perform the homing attack while having the shield active. 
because that will allow you to multi-hit them. With the smaller enemies, however, like these guys... Well, that did work, but I lost my rings. With the smaller one-hit enemies, uh, Elise can pretty much uh, shield you from them. It, uh, a safe rule of thumb is, like, if the enemies are multi-hit... Uh, I guess maybe not even if they're... You know, these enemies aren't normally in the stage, so I guess I'm not really showing it off right. Uh, let me just, you know, actually start over the stage. Um, basically retail jumping into enemies. Not everything has been fully polished with that. Not really sure. Um... Like, what's up with that, but... Anyway. Yeah, with with the one-hit enemies, you can pretty much destroy them. Like that. Like, Elise's shield is designed to be able to smash through one-hit enemies, but I think if they have multi-hit, then their hitbox is going to take priority. Uh, you'll be smashing through a lot of one-hit enemies with Elise. With the multi-hits, you activate the shield and perform the homing attack, and you can pretty much tear their health down, like, right away. That's your version of, like, the, the uh, bounce combo... With, uh, with homing attack. So that's like uh, Sonic with Elise. Still not the best playstyle, but definitely um, pretty greatly improved. Now, Sonic is going to get some buddies that uh, can help him on his adventure. When we're playing through the Sonic campaign, we are going to get Tails, Knuckles, and we'll even get to play as Silver a little bit, even though uh, he is not released yet. Um, but anyway, so with Tails, let me just show off his abilities. As you can see, uh, bottom right corner, we now have the action gauge, which we had with Elise. And using the uh, action gauge actually consumed meter. Um, so basically, these uh, chaos drives will replenish it. As you can see, it like that sort of replenishes it with Tails. So uh, with Tails' moves, he's a bit slower than Sonic, but he does have a spin jump that is capable of damaging enemies. He can fly as well. Uh, I think uh, if you hit his enemies with the underside, like from underneath them, uh, his tails can do damage, just like in uh, the original classics, like Sonic 3, when he flies. Uh, I wouldn't advise using flight to take out enemies. I would much rather advise, um, when you're from a dis uh, at a distance from enemies, the best way to take them out is likely using uh, Tails' dummy ring bomb, which is your square button. You can just tap it to quickly snipe an enemy. and it'll start to tear down their health. Uh, you can also uh, perform a lock-on attack. Wow, he literally just sniped me. You can lock on by holding it, and you can target the enemies manually if you want, and that like will tear down their health a bit more. However, the greatest addition... Oh yeah, I should also say, when you're in the air, if you spam it, then you can just throw out a bunch of dummy rings. This is a great way to bombard enemies in the air, and that's what you're going to see when we play more as Tails. Now, the uh, biggest change with Tails uh, in Project 06 is definitely his tail whip, which is mapped to Circle. We're going to be using Circle with Tails uh, quite a bit in this game. Because if you tap that, you get your tail whip, say, which is uh, from Sonic Adventure, and you can even use it in the air, too. This is a way to kind of, like, you know, take out enemies a bit more efficiently. You can even bounce them, too, if you want. And you can, and you can multi-hit with that. But one of the coolest things, however... Yeah, Tails getting some good mileage, as you can see. One of the coolest things, however, is if you tap the Tail Whip, you can just do it once. However, if you're on the ground and you hold it, he added Rhythm Badge properties to Tails, which is incredibly effective for taking out ground enemies. Uh, oops, I already took these guys out. But yeah, Tails is pretty effective because with the, the enemies in the air, you can spin jump on them, you can Tail Whip them. There, there's a lot of different combos you can do with Tails. Tails is faster when he's flying, by the way. You can stagger how much your flight depletes with the gauge. But anyway, when you see a bunch of enemies on the ground like this, you can pretty much hold the circle button. And we just bla Beyblade them. Look at this, look at this. It's beautiful, we love to see it. Tails is a lot of fun to play with, a lot more fun because of this. And he's incredibly fun. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's gonna be like a lot of fun to use Tails uh, in the game. Now, of course, we'll swap over to Knuckles and show you his moveset and give you some ideas for how we will be using him. So, we switch to Knuckles. The characters will be waiting for you at certain areas of the stage, but yeah, Knuckles, essentially, he has um, he has his running movement, he has a spin jump, and his glide, just like in Sonic Adventure, it can, in fact, damage enemies. And it's a multi-hit, which is absolutely beautiful, so you can take them out in a variety of ways with Knuckles. Knuckles is about Tails of Speed. He's probably a little bit slower, but, you know, you, you can spin jump enemies, you can glide into them. 
Uh, you, you, you can deal, like, multiple hits to them with Knuckles. However, the primary way of attacking with Knuckles is going to be his square maneuvers, his punches. You have your, your standard Stonebreaker punch, the Shift Rock, yeah, which creates an explosion. That's going to be the most generous with high frames. If you're worried about getting hit, you can also do a Square Square Circle, which will give you a straight lunge combo. So you can, like, kind of tear through this guy and then perform these Square 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 moves as a follow-up. So you can kind of go, like, boom, boom, lunge. Whoops. I did that wrong. Let me start over. Gotta be careful when starting over in Project 06. It kind of drops some frames sometimes. I think it's because of, like, some of the loading bugs. But anyway, see, you can kind of just go, go like, square, square, circle, and then square, square, square. And that will pretty much just tear through their health. Because um, you gotta be careful with, with a straight lunge. Make sure you're pretty close to the enemy to go, like, square, square, lunge you want to tear through them because you will be vulnerable after this. Knuckles has the most iframes on the third hit of his square combo. Now that's not the only thing Circle can do. If you're near an enemy and you want to really just take out a lot of their health, you can actually, um, hang on, I'm going to let him do his thing. I wanted to kind of, how did he snipe me from there? You can actually sneak up on him, hold down Circle, and watch this. Then you can perform, it, Chaos basically made it so you can charge that move up. Normally that was really bad in um, in retail, but that is essentially the adventure equivalent of the Max Heat Knuckles attack. And it's kind of like the Knuckles version of the White Gem, which is Sonic's homing smash. So that is very effective if you want to take the enemies out um, with one shot, but be careful, it makes you vulnerable when charging. The other thing is if you're near a bunch of enemies, Knuckles also has his SA2 drill dive. It goes a lot faster, and just like Silver's... Um, uh, Psycho Shock, it stuns enemies, so that is very, very effective. So a lot of the combos you're going to be seeing are Knuckles jumping, gliding, performing the Drill Dive, and doing the Stone Breaker Punch combo. That's going to be your main way for taking them out. I forgot, Knuckles also has a Square Square Triangle combo, which is an uppercut. That's pretty useful for taking out flying enemies, because you can go Square Square Triangle and then right the Drill Dive. Um, so yeah, Knuckles is basically, he's got a lot of funny moves, and it's very fun to mess around with him. You're not going to see, see Square Square Try and Square Square Try uh, Square too much, because I don't think it has much use. He has some uh, forgiveness when he's in the air, as you can see, because I didn't get hit there, but you've got to be very quick about your button inputs. It's useful for uppercutting and taking out enemies underneath you, but um, you do have to be careful when using it. Uh, but those are pretty much Knuckles' moves. He doesn't have like a right trigger move, neither does Tails. So that that's pretty much how to use all of Sonic. Uh, Sonic's um, friends for his part of the campaign. Now we're going to quickly show off Silver. Um, so Silver, as you can see, he got an updated running animation and it looks clean AF. We love to see it. Oh, everyone has grinding animations, by the way. For grinding, you can switch rails by like jump, jumping while using the left stick, and that will be uh, talked about in um, in the uh, the main game as well, because the game will give you plenty of hints. I know we're kind of dragging this on a bit long, but just kind of trying to give everyone the basics if you're new, but the, that's like kind of what you're going to be doing. So, how do we use Silver? Well, basically he's got a lot of different moves. His jump kind of keeps him vulnerable, so you've got to be careful with that. Um, he has the, um, what a lot of people lovingly call the Pimp Slap, uh, or the, uh, the Psychic Slap and everything. That doesn't have a lot of difference, distance, so I wouldn't advise using it. Um, Silver is basically a ranged fighter, so you're going to be using a lot of ranged attacks. He, his moves involve picking up the enemies and throwing them at other enemies, or picking up objects. Um, if you hold the right trigger when you're near an object, you can pick it up. And if you keep it held, you can pick up more objects. Now, once you have an object picked up, you can release it to stop picking up objects. You can target an enemy with the cursor, and you can tap square to throw an object at an enemy. Uh, I would advise throwing it in the air. It works better in stages. But yeah, anyway, that does some damage to enemies. However, a much more effective way to start dealing damage to enemies is definitely with Silver's circle move. The uh, Psychic Shot, basically his Fusro Da, which I uh, call on account of this. Because that's a way to stun enemies and deal damage. When enemies are stunned, you can pick them up with Psychokinesis and toss them at other enemies. And look at that, they go flying. Uh, by the way, that combo meter, we should talk about that too. Another way to stun enemies if you want to get up close and personal is jump into the fray, hold down square, and you can perform the Psychic Shock. And that basically stuns all enemies in a vicinity over an AoE, which is an area of effect. And then you can pretty much toss enemies at other enemies as long as you're holding them. 
Um, but yeah. Um, when it, with big enemies, you can basically take them out from a distance with uh, Silver's uh, Psychic Shot, which uh, lasts quite a while. Um, and it can uh, go, go quite a distance, and it locks onto enemies, which is great. And once enemies like this are stunned... then you can uh, grab onto them and toss them at other enemies. Now, there's something else that you can do, which is why I want to show off with multiple enemies. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about Silver's XX move. So if you jump and you hold down X, you can actually glide, you can hover in midair, but be careful because you can't grab any more objects or hover when the meter runs out. You can stagger the loss a little bit, but you will lose height, so you have to be careful. Um, anyway, moving on, you can also do the teleport dash, which now carries your momentum a bit. You could normally only do it really quick and would have to do the Psychic Slap really quick to try to keep it going. Now, Chaos allowed you to double tap and hold X, and you could pretty much Psychic Dash uh, for as long as you had meter, which is fantastic. And Silver looks so cool doing this. It's more reminiscent of the cutscenes, and that is very, very cool. But yeah, um, so what you can also do... Uh, with silver is if you have some objects nearby you can actually get on top of a movable object and you can hold your right trigger which is your psychokinesis and you can hover up a bit you can actually jump off of it to gain a little extra height too which is really nice now uh, if there are multiple enemies around something important to keep in mind is you can just immediately grab them all using a maneuver called psychokinesis all which is a little wonky I hope there is a uh, a better grab all macro in the silver update. So what you do is you get into the fray, you use Psycho Shock, and then you double tap right trigger, and then silver goes into this animation. Now, he can't move once he does this. If you double tap right trigger, you grab all enemies in your vicinity, but you can't move until you throw them. Now, he's gonna stay like this until you hold down R. You charge up all the, all the objects that you have, and then you release, and you can throw them all at once and just cause so much chaos. And you can get like a, a lot of points for that. So that is incredibly satisfying. And that's pretty much how you use Silver. He has no triangle maneuver. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's a ranged attacker. So he's, he's pretty fun to mess around with. Um, let me talk about Sonic's uh, combos really quick before we move on. So the combo system in uh, Project 06 is, uh, and in Sonic 06, is essentially you can perform combos on enemies and elongate it using, uh, you can perpetuate the combo and the bonus you get using the bounce attack. You, if you get, if you take damage, then it's going to go away. So you've got to be careful about when that happens. Um, so, what you want to do is basically take out a bunch of enemies. If you're within range of homing attacking them, then continue to homing attack. And if you're, if you're not near an enemy, then simply perform the bounce attack and keep chaining enemies as quickly as you possibly can. And when you finally land, notice you get 3,500 points. That's basically a bonus for essentially um, taking out a bunch of enemies without landing, which is a lot of fun to do. Uh, you can perpetuate it with the bounce with shadow. You can perpetuate it with the chaos spear. But you have to be careful because touching the ground will reset it for him. Sonics is the easiest to get combos with, and that's a reference to SA2 bounce attack which is fan friggin tastic um, But yeah, 06 didn't have the bonus combo point system as uh, Modern in uh, chat had said. Um, so it was good that they like properly implemented it in uh, Project 06. Um, now to go uh, to be uh, on to uh, Shadow, Rouge, and Omega. So Shadow got a pretty big update as well. Um, he plays a lot like Sonic. He has the spin jump, which can take out enemies. He has the homing attack. That works the exact same way. Uh, for his spin kick, he has it, but he doesn't have a slide if you hold it. This is just a quick way to, like, leg sweep enemies. If you're standing still, you can perform sort of a tornado kick, which pulls in enemies. For his square move, Shadow has the spin dash, and that works exactly the same way. Um, uh, Shadow's homing attack works a little bit different than Sonic's, however. Um, but first, we'll talk about his square move. He has the Chaos Spear which can be charged up to fire multiple Chaos Spears, or you can just fire a quick one. Uh, these Chaos Spears also lock on to enemies, which is very, very useful. Because if you hold it when you're near an enemy, then you can just fire multiple shots. And that's very helpful. Now, uh, Shadow can pretty much perform your basic homing attacks. However, 
when you're near an enemy with multiple hits, you can mash the uh, homing attack button to perform a chaos attack, which is basically a bunch of extra attacks. Now, this is basically Sh Shadow's built-in homing bounce combo. With basic enemies, you can take them out easily, but when you're near enemies that require multiple hits, then you can mash the button to take them out very quickly. You can also stun them using a Chaos Spear. Or deal some damage if they have heavy armor. Anyway, and this will essentially fill up Shadow's um, Chaos Meter. Now, as you can see, the uh, action gauge in the, uh, in the bottom right, this is going to work a little bit differently for Sonic, but when the action gauge is full, um, now let's see, did I miss anything? Circle, square, uh, X, and a triangle is his light speed dash. A shadow can also perform the light speed dash. Silver cannot, however, but in lieu of that, he has teleport dash. Um, more or less, the camera controls and camera reset are the same. Now we move on to Shadow's chaos abilities. So, once the meter is full, once your um, um, uh, action gate is full, if you tap right trigger, you can activate Chaos Boost, which is this uh, glowing red state. It will slowly deplete uh, meter, as you can see, but he's at Chaos Boost level 1, indicated by the red bar. This allows him to perform the Chaos Snap. If you hold the X button when you're near enemies, you can actually snap right to their location. And this allows you to lock onto them quickly and uh, take them out with great ease. So, like, for these guys... It's better with, like, the one-hit enemies that, uh, that kind of, uh, you can sort of lock onto. Like, these guys you can take out quickly. Like that. If you just hold down the button, then he'll warp from enemy to enemy up to five in a row before you have to homing attack again. Now, when the, the red bar is filled, that's the maturity part of the, uh, the action gauge, the maturity meter. You can activate Chaos Boost level two. Consumption is a bit faster. You now have access to Chaos Lance, which is a more powerful version of Chaos Sphere. If I could just... It doesn't have a lot. It, it's better for ranged attacks, and that essentially... I'm not demonstrating this well. I'm sorry. That essentially allows you to... Uh, get, it's, it's his Chaos Sphere, but it's more powerful, and it basically allows you to... to target enemies from a distance. And then, when the bar is completely filled and you can go up to Chaos Boost level 3, now we have access to Chaos Blast, which its range has been fixed from regular 06. You jump... You tap right trigger, you consume some meter, but you take out everything in your vicinity, and it is incredibly satisfying. Shadow can't go beyond Chaos Boost level 3 initially, however, there is a 100% reward that can let him do a lot more. So that pretty much does it for Shadow's Chaos abilities. You can see the screen, sort of, uh, and yeah, you don't need to jump. You can actually do it on the ground as well. And this can target items as well. Now, Chaos Boost does not make you completely invincible, so that's important to note. Um, however, there are power-ups that do, but we will get into that later. But yeah, once the meter is completely drained, once the Chaos Boost meter is completely drained, Shadow will revert to standard form, and then you'll have to build back up to Chaos Boost level 3 again. But Shadow stages have a lot of enemies, and it's all about uh, keeping the boost active. Uh, and now, of course, we'll, we'll get into Rouge. <laughs> Hi-ho, Silver! Away! Yes, true. But yeah, now we'll go ahead and get into Rouge's moveset. Uh, we're almost done through the characters, and we'll get started pretty soon. There you go, guys. Rouge content. This is what you wanted to see, right? But anyway, yeah. Rouge also has a spin jump, and that is, in fact, capable of damaging enemies as well. Much like Knuckles, she has her glide, and that can damage enemies as well. Uh, she also has a drill dive that can stun enemies, so that is quite useful. That's actually new to this game, because Rouge didn't originally have that um, in uh, Retail 06. Uh, she has a drill dive that can stun enemies. And she has her kick combo from uh, from uh, SA2, which is great. So, you know, she doesn't have the fast one, but this essentially allows her to do the, uh, the uppercut kick, which essentially combos right down into her stun move. So you can just kick enemies from close up 
stun them, and then continue to attack. And she's got pretty generous iframes. Um, if you tap, uh, Root is kind of a combo of Tails and Knuckles. She has no triangle move, but if you tap the circle, she'll uh, throw a bomb real quick. Uh, you can do it in the air as well. Um, and that's just like, you know, tap, tap it real quick. Um, if, however, uh, you hold it, then you can uh, shoot out multiple bombs, and this is great for taking out enemies at a safe range very quickly. And yes, it is spammable. Probably best not to let enemies see you. Uh, Rouge can climb, much like Knuckles as well. Um, I know you guys saw the climbing update for Rouge as well in uh, Chaos's tweets. Really excited for that. But yeah, the climbing has been fixed. No more sticky walls, obviously. But that's been a thing for a while in Project 06. And uh, if you're on the ground, you can, uh, much like Tails, you can charge up a reticle and then target enemies like that. And I should also mention, on the walls, you can also tap either square or circle to plant a bomb, and then it will explode enemies or breakable surfaces. Uh, and you'll find this uh, very useful in a lot of Bruce gameplay. And lastly, we have Omega. Now, with Omega, he is actually quite interesting. He got um, a couple of upgrades. Basically, some quality of life changes. His jump makes him vulnerable, so you cannot attack enemies with it. Uh, his hover is not spammable anymore, uh, but it does consume meter, so be careful. None of his uh, maneuvers, none of his attack maneuvers really consume meter at all, though. So he's designed to just wail on enemies. He has, like, a huge arsenal. Omega is quite literally a uh, unit. Unit 123, to be specific. Anyway, if you tap the the uh, square button, you can actually perform a quick shot, and then this will take out enemies at a close range. It's not the most effective. As you can see, I couldn't really hit him. So your square mover maneuver isn't that powerful. In the air, it goes a bit farther. You have to be pretty close for it to work. But these used to be the old ways of uh, taking out enemies with Omega. If you are uh, closer to a bunch of enemies, you can actually use something akin to Tails and Eggman's lock-on system from SA2, where you hold down the circle button, and you can perform a multi-lock-on attack. And this is basically uh, your, your homing shot with Omega to take enemies out from a distance. Omega is like Silver, but he's a bit more of a powerhouse. Um, so yeah, the square moves aren't that effective. You're going to be using Circle a lot with Omega to like take out enemies. If, however, you come uh, into contact with a lot of big enemies, you want to try basically sneak up on them and not let them uh, get the jump on you if possible. If you tap Triangle, you can go into Gatling Guns mode and then uh, hold right trigger to, uh, to take the enemies out. However, be warned in Gatling Guns mode, you move much slower, but you are way more powerful because you can aim like this, and then you can hold right trigger to just wail on enemies and just tear away their health. Be warned, you have a limit because uh, you can see 40 out of 50 shots. You can press triangle to exit Gatling gun mode again. And uh, basically, in this state, you will need to collect Chaos Drives to replenish Omega's Gatling gun state. And uh, rightfully so, because it is Omega's most powerful me technique. See, now I'm out, but I got a bunch of Chaos Drives, and then my meter gets replenished, so Omega can use that again. So that's uh, pretty much everything in terms of character moveset. That's uh, more or less how to actually use the characters, with the, which, with the exception of Sonic's gems, which we'll go over in a moment. Now, before we jump into the main game, what we are going to do is basically uh, jump into uh, the test stage again and talk about the scoring system. So, putting together everything that we've learned... We essentially just want to get as many points as possible. Invincible, by the way, doubles your points, I think. Uh, so it's useful to grab that. But yeah, definitely grab what power-ups you can in a level. Um, your your uh, end score for power-ups is... Uh, your end score of the, uh, the game is based on a couple of things. It is based on your overall score in the level, which you can see at the top left. It's based on your ring score, because you get a ring bonus at the end. So that's why you don't want to take damage and keep your rings to the end. And it is also based on a, uh, a time bonus score. So that's why it's important to finish the level relatively quickly. 
because um, what you want to do to get the S rank is uh, finish the level with at least 50,000 points. So you need to make sure you have enough of a bonus. Most levels are pretty forgiving, but you get ranks, basically. And uh, the lower your score, the lower your rank. You need 50,000, sometimes a little more on certain other levels where it glitches, but 50,000 points is what you need for your S rank. And if you get all S rank on all of Sonic and Shadow stages, respectively, then you will unlock a... Um, a new special uh, final unlockable for them at the end of um, of the uh, of their campaigns. But as you can see, this is pretty much what you want to do to take out a bunch of enemies. You just sort of, as long as you keep moving, you're pretty much fine. Every item you collect uh, adds points, so it's obviously worth. Okay, I guess not the chaos drives though, but it's obviously worth snagging items. And it's worth taking out as many enemies as you can. But Sonic stages are more about the uh, the speed of things and getting things done quickly. As where um, Shadow stages are more about points. Because most of Shadow stages you may have to use some speed, but more or less if you have... Um, with Shadow, if you have enough points in most stages, you'll just get the 50,000 automatically. Um... But yeah, rainbow rings are also points, so it's worth going through them because they can also give you shortcuts. Especially if you combo them like that. Anyway, so there is an end to the test stage, so we're just going to go in there real quick, obviously. Actually, we might as well show off the extra part of the test stage, too, for those who don't know, because this is a video about getting the most out of Product 06. So now that the basic techniques have been shown off, we're going to go ahead and head down here. You actually fall faster if you don't bounce, which is kind of weird. That's like a kind of an interesting aesthetic room for Shadow, but we're going to go ahead and jump in here. Anyway, so this warp wall will take us away. There'll be scenarios where, like, uh, characters are waiting for you, and if you go near them, then they will follow you. Kind of like Tails and Knuckles in Aquatic Base. So that's just another quality of life change feature. I've gone over this a lot in previous videos, but honestly, uh, you know, I know a lot of people uh, have been wanting to see, like, more beginner-friendly videos on this to get the most out of it. A pretty long-winded explanation here for, like, a lot of the characters, but that basically gets you... Um, shows you like what you're going to be what you're going to be using mm. but yeah the goal ring was over to the right there however if we go up here on test stage chaos actually put in a little secret which is uh the uh, xbla the xbox live arcade demo for kingdom valley which is a nice little added feature so we just climb up here no problem whatsoever and we come to the top of this thing. Then we see the Mirror of Soliana, which he's probably gonna implement in the uh, adventure fields. And you jump in here and then boom, XBLA Kingdom Valley. And what's nice is that our uh, points carry over. We like not be an idiot and die to stupid stuff. But yeah, slightly different format from the original Kingdom Valley. Those of you who remember back when Sonic 06 was called Sonic Next and had, oh, I almost died. And like it had like this demo, which is interesting. So it's nice to be able to see it again. I think that enemy topples the bridge and it gives us a new way up. One ups are points too. Definitely worth going through the rainbow rings. Now watch this, he kind of added momentum on this part, so Sonic actually slows down. You can gain more speed by uh, using the Spin Dash there. Spin Dash is useful here too because you gain a little bit of speed through this section. Uh, you can also still sort of jump off of this. The 
this demo. Didn't know the bridge came from TGS. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. And to be fair, there are a couple of things I don't fully know about Sonic 06. I'm not like some super expert or anything. So anyway, our score is 48,000. We got plenty of rings, so that should be enough. Time bonus wasn't that great, but as you can see, our score is over 50k. And that, my friends, is what gets us our tasty S rank. So, that's going to do it for the initial explanations of everything. Wow, I should just make this one into a separate video of itself. That took quite a long time. I think that's what I'll do. Excuse me a second. Sorry about that, water break. Anyway, so yeah, I think what I'll do is uh, put these strats into a separate video as sort of a tutorial guide, and now this will begin um, the video for getting the most out of uh, Project 06 in general. So, putting together everything you've seen um, from the uh, from the uh, tutorial guide will be uh, displayed in the next, the next uh, section. So I'll probably split this into two separate videos. I'll do a quick, quick outro for uh, YouTube. This is Light and Thunderbolt signing off. I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. Both of these will be going up on the same day. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on staying way past cool.